mastering this stuff now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, pressures in the capillary bed. So first thing, we should kind of just get some orientation here and I'm gonna be consistent with this. I'm gonna use the, I guess it's the left side of my paper. I'm right left challenged by the way, if you did not know this about me. I like from all the years of teaching anatomy and always thinking in anatomical position, I'm always backwards with right and left. So this side of my paper, which I believe is the left, is going to be uh, my arterial end and the right side of my paper is going to be my venous end. And we'll have some capillaries in the middle. So if you haven't looked at this stuff in the chapter yet, you'll see that these large elastic arteries eventually lead to muscular arteries, which eventually lead to smaller arteries. And eventually we get to these little things called arterioles. So arterioles are basically little teeny blood vessels and they're carrying this freshly oxygenated blood directly from the left ventricle. So this is blood that is still carrying its load of oxygen from the lungs. And our arterioles branch off, and they just keep branching, right, into these capillary beds. And what's cool about these capillary beds is for the most part, kind of, end it here, kind of wrap it around. Uh, for the most part, there are little tiny muscles around each of these little um, inlets. They're called precapillary sphincters. And they're literally, it's a little ring muscle, the word sphincter, that should sound familiar, right? Like a circular muscle. And they're going to constrict and pinch off this pathway and then all of the blood will be routed here or all of these will be pinched off and so all of the blood is routed here. And so all of these all of these precapillary sphincters kind of work to uh, constrict the capillary so that the blood is routed through other capillary beds at different times. So it's not all of the blood rushing through all of the capillary bed all at once, kind of like a constant traffic jam. It's constantly alternating throughout the capillary bed. And likewise, and, and what we see happening during times of extreme cold or extreme heat, you have this other regulation that happens where your blood is like, you know what, we're, we're gonna cut off all of these capillary beds and we're just gonna keep this little tiny one open up here because we just want it to go straight back to the veins and right up to the heart. And your hands or your fingertips might be this capillary bed, which is why your hands and your fingertips get very, very cold. It's like usually the first thing that gets cold when you're cold, right? Um, because those precapillary sphincters are kind of shunting the blood back to the core of your body. So we get this, it's called a thoroughfare channel. It's kind of like a bypass through the capillary bed that, that can bypass the rest of it in, during times of cold, right? Uh, but we're, what we're going to look at is, you know, what's happening here in these capillaries. I'm just going to pick one. I'm going to draw on this big, the biggest one that's down here, just because I happen to draw that the biggest, and it's just going to make it a little easier for me to have a big vessel to draw in. So this is going to be my capillary. Technically, it's called a capillary bed because I have lots of capillaries going through this layer. Remember, we have an area inside our vessel. Right? And then we have the areas outside of our vessel. So the areas inside of our vessel, just like inside of a cell and outside of a cell, right? We have different ions in the blood. We have different cells in the blood. We have plasma and plasma proteins in the blood. Well, the interstitial fluid that is just outside the capillary bed and just outside of our vessels, that interstitial fluid, that kind of body juice that's everywhere in our body, has a different concentration of things also. So... This whole thing is the capillary bed. I just wrote the word down here just to keep it simple. It's eventually going to lead to the venual side, right? And the venule will return the blood back to the heart. And I abbreviate heart sometimes with a heart because it's fun. So 
we're going to talk about the action. And, and I, ideally, all of these would link up as well. I'm just getting lazy with my drawing. But all of these would, would link up and go that way as well. So looking down here, the capillary bed, we're looking at forces. So on our, uh, on our capillary bed, we have the force of hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is the first pusher of movement. So as soon as the blood gets into the capillary, hydrostatic pressure is high. We have a high hydrostatic pressure, HP. That high hydrostatic pressure is going to push out solutes, water, pretty much everything except cells, right? Because this is a continuous capillary. So a continuous capillary, I'm going to draw it up here. In order for the blood, and I'm just gonna draw the blood as red just to keep it simple. So a continuous capillary is literally taking nutrients from the blood. It has to go into the epithelium cell, literally go into the cell and then pass out of the cell. So it like comes in the front door and then leaves out the back door. That's how these continuous capillaries work, right? So it's literally going in the front door and coming out the back door to get to the interstitial fluid. And so that's what's happening down here with our hydrostatic pressure. We're kicking out everything. I think of hydrostatic pressure as the really mad girlfriend. You know, you find out that your man's been cheating on you and you just kick everything out he like comes home from work and like literally all of his clothes are all over your front yard, right? Fortunately, that's never happened to me, but this is how I imagine it, right? So all the hydrostatic pressure is that mean girlfriend kicking everything out. He deserved it. He deserved it, right? But on the other side of our capillary bed, what ends up happening is now that our hydrostatic pressure has pushed all of this stuff out, now osmotic pressure takes over. And on the venual end of our capillary bed, osmotic pressure is now higher. So now we have, we have a low osmotic pressure on this side, low OP, high hydrostatic pressure. On this side, we have a high OP and a low HP. Sorry, I switched colors around. So on this side, to go back to my angry girlfriend scenario, she kicks him out, all of his stuff leaves, and on this side, she's like, wait, 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 baby, I love you, come back, right? And so some of the stuff comes back on the venual side, because now we've kicked most of the stuff out on the arterial side, now our, our osmotic pressure is higher, and so what this is going to do is it's actually going to pull stuff in, not as much but some stuff now comes back. This is also where that gas exchange takes place. This is what happens, now we're talking about a capillary bed. We have capillary beds in our lungs. This is what happens in our lungs, right? We have that right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary valve, our pulmonary artery, right, goes over to the lungs, picks up the oxygen. This is how it picks up the oxygen. It kicks out the carbon dioxide and it picks up the oxygen, right? And this is what happens all around our body. We're kicking out the nutrients, the glucose, the sodium, right, all of those things. And on this side, we might be picking up some carbon dioxide and some waste products, right? And so then it goes back to the heart through the venule, to our small veins, to our medium-sized veins, and then to our large veins, to the right atrium. So this is what's happening in a capillary bed. High hydrostatic pressure on our arterial end kicks everything out. I'm done. We're over. I don't ever want to see you again. Oh, wait, baby, come back. Stuff comes back. We'll see this trend again in the kidneys. The kidneys do a similar sort of thing. 
Um, and so hydrostatic pressure, I always think of hydrostatic pressure as the pushing and osmotic pressure as a pulling. Hydrostatic pressure is pushing out, osmotic pressure is pulling in. It's important if you, if you go by that motto, it's important that you understand where is out and where is in, right? I say that from the perspective of the blood. Hydrostatic pressure is pushing out of the blood and therefore out of the capillary. Osmotic pressure is pulling into the blood and therefore into the capillary. So that's how I remember those things. Numbers so much don't matter. The book gives you numbers. It gives you like measurements of millimeters of mercury and all of that stuff. It really doesn't matter. You, In theory, if you were given numbers, if you were given numbers that said, and I'm just going to draw it up here just to, to, you know, demonstrate. But let's say that our hydrostatic pressure up here is 50. And I'm literally making these numbers up. And our osmotic pressure is also 50. Uh, what's moving here? Is anything moving here? If our hydrostatic pressure and our osmotic pressure are equal at this point in our capillary, is anything moving? The answer is no. I see Amanda shaking her head. No, no movement. Right? The only time we get movement is when we have unequal hydrostatic and osmotic pressure. Right? If hydrostatic pressure is stronger, it's going to push. If osmotic pressure is stronger, it's going to pull. Right? And so typically, you have hydrostatic pressure equaling osmotic pressure somewhere in the middle of the capillary bed. There's no exchange taking place. So on one end, we have an imbalance of hydrostatic pressure taking over, pushing stuff out. It pushes so much stuff out that at some point, it's equal. Hydrostatic and osmotic pressure end up equal. But by the time it gets over here, we've lost so many solutes and so many, uh, so much volume that now our osmotic pressure is higher and so it's going to pull back in. And so that is how capillary exchange works. It's a, a balance. It's a interplay between osmotic pressure and uh, hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is pushing out of the blood vessel. Osmotic pressure is pulling into the blood vessel.